take you through now. So let's think of this active rehabilitation process, and, and, and I should probably say, maybe you're not injured, but you want to avoid injury. Um, we'll see that the recovery, the things that you might do to recover from an injury um, are likely to be similar to the things that you would do to avoid an injury. And so this is what we're gonna run through, and we can use the acronym RISC, um, which stands, so the R is for reducing load when necessary, um, and improving the capacity to tolerate load, shifting load, but also keep adapting. And we'll explain those things for you now. My job is to just talk briefly about reducing load, and then I'll pass over to the other guys to talk about the other things. So, when it comes to reducing load, picture this scenario. I'm not talking about someone that has had an acute traumatic injury at the moment. So, if you're on crutches or in a moon boot or something, this probably isn't relevant. We're talking for the majority of runners and triathletes whose injuries are either chronic or recurrent or that mild niggle. So, you're still able to run, um, but you're impaired in either you, you have pain when you run or you can't progress your running because of some kind of pain. So you're limited in this ability. Inability. And, and this is the most common thing that we see in the clinic. Now, when it comes, and, and, and we have this issue that what we need to do first and foremost is change the load that's going through whatever that dam damaged area is, whether it's the knee or the shin or the Achilles or whatever, we know that reducing that load down to a level that can allow for some tissue healing is really important. But we also know that if we totally remove load, that will impair the healing process. And this is the first conversation that's often quite profound for people that we talk to, that when we encourage them to maintain some running volume, that's often perceived as being a little bit counterintuitive. But it's actually really important to stimulate healing and maintain conditions. And so we use this kind of Goldilocks zone principle where we say, look, you need to dial back your running to the point that you can run without exacerbating your symptoms, but no further. And this is a really important thing in terms of managing that load. So what we've got and what we use, and it's a very simple and crude term, but it's actually quite effective, is this thing called the four out of 10 rule. And that's, a, and that's an application that I think is really simple where when you go for a run, ask yourself the following question. My niggle, whether it's a, a niggle or an acute pain or, or whatever the case may be, give it a score out of 10, where zero is no pain and 10 is unimaginable pain. And what some good studies have, have repeatedly demonstrated is that if you continue to run, but moderate your running to the point where you don't exceed that four out of 10, your outcomes will be superior than if you didn't do any running at all and you just rested that area. And we use this as a really solid guide to reduce load and then increase load. And so what our role to do is, is really hold your hand in terms of what's the best value running that you can do while still avoiding those exacerbations of symptoms. The other thing to just note with that is this idea that um, when it comes to training load, there is a corruptive effect of some of the other things that we do. And as triathletes, this is something that we need to be abundantly mindful of, that sometimes dropping that running volume, you have to do more than that. We're swimming, we're on the bike, we're hopefully in the gym as well, and that brings its own systemic stress, and that sometimes needs to be managed as part of a big picture, reducing that load. And I suppose the final thing to say, and along with that, is probably that with you know 99% type A personalities in here, is that there's probably other stresses in your life, be that work or family or, or other things that are filling your plate. Those things often have an impact there as well. So there's a real big picture to be mindful of here. But the outcome that we're looking for, continue to run enough so that you can still stimulate those tissues, but not so much uh, not so much that you're exacerbating that condition. Anyway, so that represents the first pillar of what we're talking about. And I think I'm gonna hand over to James now, who's gonna take that on to talk about the next thing. So thank you.